Sexy Paige, thanks for joining us here on Zoom. We're populating the room still. We're right at 8.03, and we're going to jump into the announcements after our music. So stay tuned. You know the drill. If you have any questions, you can leave it here in the chat box. If you're on Facebook, write in the comment section. It's V, your virtual producer here with Oasis Spiritual Center, and we're getting our serendipity service started very shortly. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Serendipity Sunday. I am Dr. Felicity Joy, and I'm bringing the announcements this morning. Um, for those of you that are new, we want you to feel completely welcome and that you know what's going on with this online ministry. We have offerings for you all week, uh, starting on Monday uh, through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 15 a.m. Central Standard Time, we offer up morning meditation. It is a time to go inside and reflect and refresh yourself as we connect with one another and connect with the divine creative source of all that is. And we just have a wonderful time meditating on a um, word of wisdom for the day. And then uh, someone offers up a prayer. So you don't have to feel that you have to come prepared to pray. You don't have to speak at all. You can just come and enjoy with us. And then on Tuesday evenings, if you enjoy this morning's message, which we know you will, we invite you to dive a little bit deeper on Transformation Tuesdays, where we'll begin to just dig into some of the issues that will be presented today. And you'll get a chance to interact with the message as well, because we want you to be able to not just hear something, but to become a doer of that which you've heard. And if you would like to learn more about the foundational principles uh, that are taught at, at Oasis Spiritual Center, there's a couple of things you could do. As soon as this broadcast is over, you can go to www.the placeofpossibilities.com. And you can check out what we believe there. You can get a review of these announcements, learn how to sign up for anything that's of interest to you. And also on Saturdays, Saturday morning, we have Saturday school where you can come in and in more of an even sort of academic way, you can come and explore the foundational teachings of what we like to call new thought or now thought. And uh, we invite you to really just immerse yourself in what the spirit is doing at this time and place in this season. And so right now, I believe we're going to be talking a little bit more about what we started last a couple weeks ago, talking about maturity. So I'm excited to hear the message from our pastor, Apostle Gregory Stan. Awesome. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Felicity. Uh, minister, uh, that is, um, it's always a pleasure to see you and to speak with you. What I'm going to ask my, my um, producer will make sure that everybody's muted, muted out this morning. Um, and we're going to jump right into this morning's teaching. Today is Saturday, I mean Sunday, Serendipity Sunday. And so I pray that this message is serendipitous, that is right on time for those of you in our listening and viewing audience. For those of you who will be catching it at a later day, which will always be the present day on our YouTube channel, Oasis Spiritual Center, Oasis Spiritual Center, you will find that this message will be posted as part two. So if you didn't get part one, tune in. Um, but right now, this morning, we're going to jump back into the conversation from a couple of weeks ago. Um, we were talking about signs of spiritual maturity and um there, this is something that we all should be mindful of particularly when the bible tells us we should examine ourselves and often you've heard that scripture when it comes to communion over in first corinthian it says let a man examine him or herself before they take of the the lord's supper or before they eat the Lord's Supper. And, and so that should be one of our spiritual practices. A spiritual practice is that thing that we do intentionally. Um, a spiritual practice should be not a religious practice, which is usually forced on us or encouraged by our group experience, 
but your spiritual practice is where the rubber meets the road. It's your day-to-day -day activity. It's the thing that you willfully do. Um, you're doing it from your heart and not just from your head. And your spiritual practices should grow in intensity. I mean, there should be times where you spend very, as you look at your spiritual development, you you can find times that you spend very little time in prayer. Um, you can find that you had very little trust or your trust level of God was very low. Um, so trust is even a spiritual practice. And, and I think it's foundational because on everything that you do has to be on the foundation of you trust that the things that you do are in alignment with um, what is represented of your highest and greatest good, what is re in representation of uh, source or God as we know it. So uh, I wanted to look at uh, one particular scripture this morning as I drill down into this conversation. And this scripture is found in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 4, verse 15. And it says, for though you have 10,000 instructors or instructors in Christ, in Christ consciousness, yet you have not many fathers, okay? For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel, through the good news, through the, the teachings. And so I like that first um, part of that verse. It says, though you have 10,000 instructors, and that's when you look at um, not only in um, Christianity or in the religious conversation, but you have all these people who are instructing you, all these people who are telling you what to do. And even on the coaching side of the house, you know, I'm a, a professional coach. Um, and one of the things I have found that many times people will look at um, co or take on the role of being a coach, but at the same time, you'll find that they are not um, really trained in coaching. Coaching is not about instructing. Um, and we want to look at that. It's really not about teaching. It's not about leading. Um, but coaching is more uh, of, of a, 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 a you being subject to a leader, but it's more that you're in a, a relationship with a guide who kind of takes you through um, your life um, and helps you to drill down in things that are, are showing up. So this morning, I want us to really reconsider our relationship. Let me get my um, daishiki together here. It's kind of crooked. Uh, oh, it looks crooked to me. Okay, let me do this. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to sit back down. So my presentation will be more appropriate. Okay, I believe. There you go. Better. Okay, thank you, V. Much better. You're welcome. I should have did that. Should have did that earlier told me hey you, right. you're kind of crooked there <laughs> yeah I'm good, awesome. good good so um when we look at the whole conversation around trust not trust but spiritual maturity it is a continual examination um it's a continual looking at and when we talk about examination um, it usually has to do with a test when you take an, an, an examination. Um, and the root of the examination is the exam. And life is an exam. Earth school is an exam, is an examination. And don't look at it as when things happen to in your life as if God is doing something to you or Satan is doing something to you. Now, that's, a, that's part of spiritual maturity. When you get to the place of realization that no one's doing anything to you, that you are doing things to yourself, is not an enemy out there, but it's an inner me, a I N N E R. It's your enemy. And what is your enemy? It's the, the thoughts that you have that exhaust themselves above and beyond the things of God, the things of source, the truths of source, that you can do all things. That's a that's an examination filter. I can do all things through Christ consciousness versus the belief that I'm limited by my phenotype of being a male or a female or my gender, uh, I mean, not gender, but my ethnicity. Um, so all of these things have to be dealt with as we mature. Uh, we have to mature through situations and circumstances, um, the sufferings that we go through, all of those things are part 
of our maturation process. And we're going to look at that today. Um, in the book of um, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, it says there, by now you should be teachers. Now, that's for many of you on this call right here, right now, those who are tuning in at some future date, which is today, the scriptures explicitly says, by now you should be teachers. However, or instead, you need someone to teach you again. Not even anything new, but going back over to again to be to recapitulate, to go back through the things, the lessons that you evidently haven't gotten and you need to be reminded of. He says um, here in the, um, the fifth chapter of Hebrews, you need someone to teach you again the first things you need to know from God's word. Now, I often say to many of you as a disclaimer that I'm unapologetically a Christian, which I, what I mean by that, um, that's my spiritual pathway. And for those who tune in, tap into this conversation or the conversations that I lead, must be mindful of that. Uh, I am not um, one who ta have tossed my belief, meaning that my Christian walk has been experiential. It's expanding. It's maturing. There were times when I took the Bible literally. There were times when I had an idea that God was doing things, good things to me, and Satan was doing bad things to me. There was times where I, I believed in the fairy tales and the stories that was written in are written in the Bible. But when I those I was a child, and what I mean by that that I was immature in the faith. It says when I was a child, I did childish things. But as I grew up, as I take on full maturity, I put away childish things. I put away beliefs. I put away practices that don't represent my highest and greatest good, that don't represent what true spirituality is all about. For the word tells us that the traditions of men have made the word of God of no effect or no impact. What is the traditions of men? Your church creed. What is the traditions of men? The um, improper um, exegesis or interpretation of scripture, um, interpreting scripture from the perspective of your position, your vantage point versus the true light of the, of the, um, the filter of the spirit that allows you to see things for what they really are to mean. And so the, 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 the Bible admonishes us that we have to put away, you know, at one time that thing served you. Um, when you think about your natural maturation process, um, when you were in kindergarten, you know, you had crayons, you had um, milk and cookies, and you you had a nap time. But then when you hit first grade, the teacher says, ain't no falling asleep up in here. Matter of fact, you can't even bring your food in the classroom. And you were on task all day. And, you know, you had learned earlier to uh, in kindergarten, how to play well with others, how to stay within the lines when you're coloring, all those things. But now the next level, you put some of those things away. You don't even revisit them. They should just come with your toolbox. And so that's my challenge today. For many of you who are listening in, it's time for you to begin to be the teachers or the examples and not always running from pillar to post to get somebody, some preacher to, to inspire you or motivate you with another lesson. Now, that's the difference then of uh, Oasis Spiritual Center for Divine Living. I, I, I'm more of a teacher. Uh, I'm more about um, uh, expanding what you know and even helping you to shine the light on that which you think you know. For the reason why I say that, that what you think you know for me, to know something is to do that thing. To know and not to do is not to know. So when people say quickly, I know, but if they're not doing it, they don't know. All you are is aware. So awareness don't win the game. Awareness gets you through the door. But the game of life is won in application. And that's part of spiritual maturity. Application, growing through the things you go through. So he says, by now you should be teachers. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the rudimentary things you need to know from God's word. You still think you still need milk instead of solid food. You know, there comes a point where you should no longer be 
on milk. You no longer should be um, having to eat from your mom's mouth or from um, the Gerber's bottles, but you need to be now moving to solid food, okay? Anyone who lives on milk cannot understand the teachings about being right with God. The sincere milk. If you're leaving just on the sincere milk, the essential milk, it puts you in the place of you will grow up. But you just because you're physically grown, don't know that doesn't mean that you're emotionally, doesn't mean that you're mentally, doesn't mean that you're spiritually mature. So just because you present in a body or you have time under your belt, history of being in church all these years, and that's a qualifier a lot of people will use. I've been in church all my life, but is the church in you all your life? Is it expanding? And when I say the church in you, I mean, do you realize that it is God in you seeking to express as you through you? Or is God limited to its expression through you because of your will is the way in which you live your life? The Bible tells us that many are the plans of man, but the end thereof is destruction. Part of spiritual maturity is understanding every good idea isn't a God idea, isn't an idea that aligns totally with sources, will in your life. Now, now, one of the things I want you to begin to really drill down in on is that you all come here with a soul purpose. Now, I'm an athlete. Uh, I used to be an athlete. Um, inside this body somewhere is an athlete. Um, I was a wrestler. And I played two sports at one time. At one time, I played football. And I actually, I used to play basketball, but not organized basketball. Then when I got to a certain age, I realized that I had a height restriction. And so I let uh, basketball alone. And I, um, I went into football and wrestling. I didn't like football because as a team sport a lot of times people were playing on Saturday night that um, hadn't really put in the work but they had a relationship with the coach but I like wrestling because what I do Monday I mean Monday through Thursday nights um, or through Thursday prepared me for that that circle up match that is every Friday we would have a circle up match that is if you going to wrestle under the spotlight on Saturday you had to beat all the contenders at your weight class now sometimes I was upset some of my friends would be challenging me uh, for my position but I beat them all I was there every Saturday night under the spotlight but the point I'm making is there was a certain regimen to that prepared me to be in the spotlight on Saturday. There were certain things I did. Uh, I made sure I was eating properly. I made sure that uh, I was attending practice, uh, staying for the whole practice, participating in, in practice, uh, running the stairs, uh, all the lifting weights. That regimen is, was a little different than my buddies who were basketball players. Um, they, they ran, um, but they didn't do the same things we did. We climbed ropes. Uh, we did all different, a different set of exercises that would prepare our bodies for the engagement. So I'm saying that's a great analogy for you have experiences that you go through. And these experiences that you go through are uniquely designed uh, as what I call catalyst points or touchstones in your life that give you the opportunity to identify your readiness, to identify if you are ready to go to the next thing. But we're in an instant gratification age where everybody just feels like, as long as I know the scriptures, I, I, can, I can quote the scriptures from pillar to post, to from, from uh, Genesis to all the way back to Revelations. I, I know the scriptures. I know of the scriptures, wrote memory. But spiritual maturity has nothing to do with how many scriptures you can quote, how many scriptures you know by heart. By, by the heart or, or by, by the head, but it's really the scriptures you know by the heart, it means the ones you have applied. When we talk about spiritual maturity, we're looking at things like trust, okay? You can't say that you're spiritual mature, but you have a low understanding or a, a low grade or score, score in trust. Now, how do we determine our trust and God, there's a variety of ways we can determine if we truly trust source. 
That is, one, we don't lean to our own understanding. When you have a situation that jump off in our life, we don't uh, lean into what our own understanding is, but we allow, allow the truths, the light of the, the universal truths to enlighten us. And we, when I say we don't lean in, we don't do what we think is the right thing to do at that given time. We, we don't lean into what does our head tell us? We lean into what is our heart. See, many of us don't even trust our hearts because uh, we, our hearts have failed us. But we have to understand this. To be spirit-led is to walk through intuition, not walk solely on information that, and experiences that you have amassed. You can't even depend 100 on your experiences. The way you handle it yesterday may not work today, okay? It may be worked yesterday, all the way up to today, but you try it today, it's not the, the answer. It, it, won't, it won't get you the outcome. That's why we have to walk in the spirit. How do we know who, if we're the sons and daughters of God? How do we know if we are of the household of faith? Because we walk in the spirit. We walk by, uh, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by spirit. We don't use the weapons of the war, war warfare that the world use, the things that are carnal, but we trust and believe that prayer changes things. We trust and believe that affirmating, affirming statements change things. We trust and believe that we live in a universe, an ecosystem that is friendly to us. We trust and believe that it's the Lord thy God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Trust. Another way of trust is our ability to give and receive. Many of us won't let go of the thing. Let's talk about receiving. Um, to, to receive. Now, many people say, I don't have a problem receiving, but many people have a problem receiving. For a long time, I had a problem receiving, okay, uh, because I felt that I would owe someone something because I had not had genuine relationships where when someone gave you something or gifted you something, there wasn't a condition, there wasn't a setup for something to come. Um, so I had to learn to be open to receive. I had to trust that that which is coming to me is coming from a person's heart, is, is meant for me. I had to trust, be, be open to receive. Now, a big, another big challenge I find is when it comes to our maturity level with spirituality has to do with the giving. Notice that we receive with our non-dominant hand. And for me, I receive with my left hand and I give with my right hand. And the reason why I talked about this not too long ago, that um, the, the, the non-dominant hand is the weaker hand. So it's the hand that receives because it's issue for most of us, it's easier to receive. But the giving aspect of our lives usually takes some strength. It, 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 it takes the ability to, um, to willfully do something that you may not desire to do. When we talk about giving, um, when, when we look at just the topic of giving, and this month we're going to be dealing with as we move into the month of um, June, we're going to spend some time talking about giving. We're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about that, not just from the perspective of giving to a ministry, but this whole money conversation. And on next um, Sunday, um, Minister Felicity is going to kick that off. Um, and so I'm going to let that be serendipitous. I'm not going to... Um, tell you what that message may be, because I really don't know. It's going to be serendipity to me, too. I just know that she's going to bless us with that conversation. So what am I saying? When we talk about trusting, do we trust, um, trust the universe, that the universe is, in a, is, is a place of abundance? And many of us, if we look at our lives, um, examine. We examine. And examination don't even mean look. Examine. The examine can sometimes mean to look, but the examine can be looking at the results of the examination. You had an opportunity to do something, and what did you do? Not what would you do. Anybody can say what they would do. That's not a sign of spiritual maturity. The true sign of spiritual maturity is what did you do? <laughs> so we got to be willing to examine ourselves. 
So this morning, I'm really telling you this, the, the second part of this whole conversation about spiritual maturity has to do with your willingness to examine yourself. That scripture goes on and says that anyone who lives on milk and cannot understand the teachings about being right with God is a baby. Solid food is for full-grown men, full-grown individuals. They have learned to use their minds to tell the difference between good and bad. So we know how to decipher between what is right, what is wrong, what is appropriate, what is inappropriate. And so that's part of being mature. When you're a child, you do those things that are appeasing to the flesh, or you do those things that will get you liked. A couple of things I want to share this morning uh, has to do with when we look at uh, spiritual maturity, we need to also look at it from how do we get fed? Um, there comes a place where you no longer need someone to direct you. But many pastors and many individuals who are in the leadership role only stay in a directing type of relationship with you. When you, were, when you are a child, you require directing. You require someone to teach you the rudimentary, rudimentary things. You require ongoing instruction. You require the, someone to lead you. But as you grow in spiritual maturity, not that you don't value or at times you, when you get to the next level of spiritual maturity that you have not mastered yet, then perhaps you need someone to lead, to instruct, to teach you. But true spirituality says at some point that is not the guiding force in your life. That is, you're not being directed all the time. You're being led by the Holy Spirit. Then there's the the true relationship. So when we look at um, Gen, in the Hebrews where it talks about, I mean, 1 Corinthians, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. Now, there's a difference between a fathering role and a, a mothering role. And if you have not had the uh, uh, opportunity to, to grow up or experience a healthy mother, father, male, female role, in the family, you 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 can, you will miss this essential piece. Um, and here's the essential piece that um, there's there's something that women naturally give children, and there is something that fathers naturally give children. And because you have a mother and a father operating in in the household, each of them can be fully in that role. But one of the things we should learn, even as I learned this later in life. Um, I didn't really learn the lesson, the mothering role. I left that totally, totally up, totally up to Tony. She mothered them, um, almost to the demise of the children. What the, the, um, the spoiling usually comes from the mother. Now, now here's the the the, the issue. When Tony passed, I realized that my relationship with uh, my children was totally a fathering relationship. It was like, um, this is the reality of the situation. Uh, matter of fact, it was more directing. It was more teaching, instructing. It wasn't a real relationship that she had. And I was somewhat jealous of that uh, because it became apparent that although I was there for all my children, when they woke up every morning, I was there. Um, they had two parents in the house. The primary parent for the majority of life had been their mother. So that presented a problem um, after she made her transition. They were all adult children. Now I had to reformat my relationship with them. And I learned really quickly that they didn't need a father at the point of the loss of their mother. They needed someone who could step in and someone who could still nurture them, nurture them and be that listening ear um, without um, ending the conversation, say, you just need to do that, um, that ear that is, was non-judgmental, that's going to tell them that everything's going to be all right. And so in her passing, I matured in a, another level of, of being. And I'm so much a better person today as a result of the suffering I went through with having lost a wife. And so I'm saying part of spiritual maturity has to do the thing with the things you suffer, Okay. Um, so, so some of the things that we suffer, the, the scripture tells us more than that, 
We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and the endurance produces character. And the word character in the Greek is the word approval. So you, you, get, you, you get that self-approval of maturity by the things you go through. We grow through the things we go through. So back to that, um, the analogy of though you have um, 10,000 instructors, you not have many fathers. And so the fathering role is essential, okay? But it's also essential that you get to the place, when I say the fathering role, it's more of a, a guide. He's out in front um, and is, he's also there because he's been through, it's been through someone, I mean, through some things. So when we guide, at this point in your spiritual maturity, you should be more in relationships with a guide. And I see myself more as a guide with you all. So in a traditional setting, this type of ministry wouldn't work for immature people. But because you're at a level of in, of maturity, you don't need to see me. You don't need to have me really lay hands on you. Don't have to lay eyes on me. You know, for many of you, I may just be a figment of your imagination. You've never seen me. All you have experienced is a virtual version of me. So, uh, part of spiritual maturity is to be in relationship with someone who's there to draw things out of you. And that's what I try to do with you all. I try to draw the best out of you. Okay. I try to um, not change a situation, not rush you through a situation, but draw out what you are to be getting from the situation. Uh, encourage. So you need to be in a relationship with someone who's going to encourage you, not judge you, encourage you to be right where you are, going through right what you're going through. Okay, so you still drinking or, or imbibbing or doing something that you know that it's a childish thing. It's a thing that you need. Now, that's not a judging statement. I'm saying there comes a point in your life where you may realize that this doesn't serve me anymore. And so I wouldn't just step up and say, yeah, you need to stop doing it. No, I want to explore with you. Uh, what does it look like? What, what is the advantages of no longer doing it? What what have you gotten out of doing it for this far? Because everything we do in life, at some point, uh, we've gotten something out of it. But then we have to come to the point where sometimes we've squeezed that thing and there's nothing else to get out of it. It's time to move on to the next thing. I'm here to motivate you. That's what, uh, when you're at a point of spiritual maturity, you just need a level of motivation, inspiration. Uh, you don't need true instruction. You don't need somebody to tell you to do this, that, and the other. Okay, um, so that, that's important. And also, uh, when you get to a certain point of, of um um, spiritual maturity, then the person who is your guide also is just following you, just tagging along, you know, shadowing you to see how you're de doing with things, not as a, a voyeur, but to really just be there, eyes on, ears on, um, present to what's, what you're growing through. So that way I can be reflective, okay, and that I can offer reflective listening to you, that I can restate to, so I hear you saying this, or it, 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 to me, it looks like that I can even um, um, restate to you what you stated to me, and you can say, well, that's not what I meant, and sometimes that gives you clarity, so I go along with you in this journey, so sign of a spiritual maturity is that you just only sometimes need someone to go along with you. And then the, the, the truest sign of spiritual maturity is to know that you're never alone, that there is someone who is more proficient than the natural person that could be going along with you. And that's the spirit. Spirit says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And you know, even though you said this, that aligns itself with something that Christ has said or Jesus said, but in, in, the, in the natural sense, Jesus is not with us. In the natural, Jesus is not with us. So there has to be a deeper meaning behind that, and it's the spirit. And so we have to understand that we're not alone. We have to understand that we are one with source, one with God. Greater is it that lives in me than the me, the physical aspect that you can see that lives in this world. We have to come to the realization that we are in this world, but we're not of this world. See, these are signs of spiritual maturity. When you take on the deeper teachings like that and you bring it full circle and you look at it and you can say, 
This is what that really means. Am I living in this world? Do I live according to the world system? It has nothing to do with what shoes you wear, what clothes you wear, how, how long your dress is, how short it is. It has nothing to do with all of those things. When we talk about spiritual maturity and living in this world, it means that I'm an ambassador. I'm from another place. And that my, 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 my substance, my sustenance, the thing that sustains me, I don't get it out of this system, but it comes into the system, but it comes from the place of the kingdom. It comes from what we, I talked about it yesterday, the quantum field, the invisible, the invisible field. So spiritual maturity is really key. And we never become 100. We never really become 100% spiritually mature. Because when you master the thing that you've been going through. You may get a, a respite or a season of rest, but the next test is coming. And the test that you get is not because you've done something wrong, but because the universe source says she's ready. So you, when you're chosen to go from first grade to kindergarten, I mean, from kindergarten, or some people getting a demotion this morning, when you're chosen to go from kindergarten to first grade and maybe even jump first grade and you over in second grade with some serious learning going on, you may look at those people who promoted you as, they didn't mean, this was this my demise. No, they knew that you had been wasting your time going to keep first grade and they bumped you up. And so sometimes you have some experiences in life that come relatively early in your spiritual development because you are not a spiritual midget. You're a spiritual giant. So big things happen because it activates big responses. So that's my message for you this morning. It's time for you to move to the next level of your spiritual maturity. And it's steeped inside the foundation of accountability and responsibility. Being accountable to yourself, being responsible to the truths you hold to be the guiding principles of your life. That's my message for you this morning. We're going to take a moment and prepare to go over into the green room and have a brief conversation. And so I want to just remind those of you who joined us this morning that if you look in the feed, you will find the link to the website, which is www.theplaceofpossibilities, or it's right here on your screen, www theplaceofpossibilities.com. A couple of things I encourage you to do. Poke around out there. If this is your first engagement, look at what I believe, what it is we believe, what, what is it we expose, because that'll help you understand why I say what, why we do the things we do. You also can um, find out what's going on all week long. I know early on, our producer and our announcer shared with you some things about what's going on this week. Um, so you can look around out there. I'm going to be changing some images there. I found out that some of my images are copyrighted. So I'm going to make sure I get those images shift, switched out and update the website. Then lastly, this morning, I always want to make space for those of you who are spiritually mature, who are growing in your faith, to practice your faith. That is in the area of giving. Giving is an excellent way to determine um, your um, belief in um, that God gives God guides, God protects you. So it's the word says, the Lord thy God gives seed to the sower. And the sower means that one who sows. That doesn't mean that the seed that you get, all of it has to be sown for. It means this, the word of God tells us, you don't bridle the mouth of the oxen that treads out the corn. So when God blesses you, he gives you more than enough to, for the assignment. He gives you enough that you may enjoy it also but we have to know when we get money, when we get resources, they have a mission. And many times uh, we've been lost waiting on that blessing for such a long, oh, I just heard that beautiful sound on my phone here. That means someone who just made a donation to the ministry. I don't know who- I was gonna say, I'm hearing say. some background noise. That's right, All you right. heard the background. You heard the cha-ching sound. Right. That, 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 that gives me, uh, it keeps me in gratitude. Every time I hear that, it tells me that I'm in the right relationship with individuals who are spiritually mature. They are not being tugged on, they're not being, so, Throughout the week, I hear that sound more than I hear it on Sundays. 
I hear it on Fridays. I hear it on Thursdays, Thursday. And it just reminds me that somebody's growing up. Somebody's growing up. Somebody's at a point in their spiritual development that they understand this principle of sowing and reaping, this principle of, 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 of giving and you shall receive. So if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, uh, we don't tell you how much, but we just says, give from your heart. If you have to give from your head, hold on to it. But when you give from your heart, you will see what's given from the heart will touch the heart and come back to the heart. Awesome. So that's all I have to say about the appeal this morning. You can give by way of PayPal. You can give by way of Cash App. You can give by way of te um, text to give and through our tithing um, um, app there on the website. Great. Okay, V, let's just go into the, the green room and have a little conversation. I got about Absolutely. 10 minutes that I can entertain and engage okay. and guide um, those who are on the call this morning. Okay, sounds good. I just, Felicity and I went back and forth in the chat box a little bit. And Felicity, I'm going to unmute you if that's okay, because I'd love to always have a conversation with you. And you also have your hand up. But we were talking about in terms of our spiritual maturity versus immaturity, just how still to this day, I'll be so honest, it really hurts me to ask for help. I know I'm growing up. I know that I'm reaching that spiritual maturity. And I know a lot of where that comes from growing up, um, just, just being in a place where I was the giver, even among my siblings, you know, I'm the middle child and I'm the oldest. So just being the giver um, among my friends and, and being someone who just really is just too prideful to ask for help. And Felicity and Greg, both of you can feel free to take this question, but at what point in my life do I need to just go over myself? <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, you all, I'll be so transparent. In my earlier 20s, when it was just my daughter and I, and I was a young single mom, I got evicted because I didn't tell family that I needed help. I got my stuff put out on the street. I had to call my parents in the middle of the day, like, guess what? Uh, our stuff, I mean, that's how far. It goes, me not asking for help. Well, the only thing I wanted to share about that is, because I, I had shared in the chat that that was a very painful and awesome experience for me, learning how to ask for help. Um, but my daughter has a giving gift. It, it's, you know, sometimes you can, the people that have a gift for something are an example for the rest of us of things that are possible. So anyway, um, my daughter had an even harder time asking for help than I did. And I did explain to her and I share with you that if it's something is a particular gift for you, um, the, the, the pushback against that is going to be even stronger because there is an enemy to the work that we have to do. And we have to learn, it makes it even stronger if we have to push against something. So you're just being given greater weight to push against to strengthen that muscle but it's not something to condemn yourself over. It's something to understand that it's it's because you have a gift in that area uh, to give. So you need to learn that it, you will not have anything to give if you don't learn how to receive well. You won't be able to give to the extent that you're able to give if you don't learn to receive well. If you can only get, I mean, my daughter can give, She's been giving, you know, before she had any money to give, you know, she'd give of her own and things like that and stuff. So, um, so anyway, it, that, that would be my encouragement not to beat yourself up over it, but to recognize it's because you have a particular gift. Awesome. And I like that uh, you, you can't give from an empty container. You, you have to um, be open to receive. Now, um, when you mentioned that, there's a couple of things that comes um, to mind. Now, I've been down that same road. One day I came home and I had a big sign on my yard that my house was about to be sold at, at an auction. <laughs> Uh, because uh, the, the, the house was associated with um, the ministry and there was some financial challenges the ministry got in giving had fallen off back and fallen off in 2007 and we were the ministry was, was in foreclosure and so my house was on a on a on a on a corner um, on right on Taft so it's a main thoroughfare going through Berkeley. I came home and I saw this guy putting this big sign up on, on my yard. As soon as he got in his truck, I took the sign down. I was <laughs> embarrassed like you, but because of inability or unwillingness to trust that people 
will come alongside. So when we talk about um, a difficult time asking, it has to do with trust. It has to do with um, de denial uh, or don't want to be denied. Don't want to have the experience of someone telling you no, or maybe we had no told to us by those in our lives that we felt should have come alongside of us and could have come alongside of us, and they were supposed to come alongside of us, and we knew it, but they didn't. So we we don't trust. We don't want to have that experience anymore. Or we've been told as kids that, you know, suck it up. You go handle this. You got to go through this yourself. We got to be very careful how we, if you got three children, you can't give all three children the same advice. It's so important that you know each child, their temperament, you know, who that's they are. So you can't important. treat them the same because that's, that's really parental abuse. Uh, and so um, sometimes we just try to sustain ourselves but we are workers together in this thing. This is not my ministry. It's, it's our ministry. And, um, and this is not, that's not your family. It's our family. You know, when you're talking to the children, you talk about our family. We talk about shared leadership. We talk about shared responsibility at the levels of where they're at. So Spiritual maturity is a conversation that we all need to be engaging in, in mirror work. We need to be asking ourselves, as I, am I a, a mature, as mature as I present myself? No, many of these people, the one thing I have with Christianity, now I'm, I, I've been behind the veil with some of the big name people. And I can tell you, it was just, I was just appalled. The things I would hear when I would go in the back room with all the ministers, all the pastors, the people who were supposed to be spiritually mature. And the things they would be saying, I was like, man, you bogus. And I was like, you know, the, it's like they're the wizard in, in the Wizard of Oz. You know, so one day the curtain's going to be pulled and your arse, your arse, y'all know what I'm saying, right? It's going to be ex exposed. <laughs> hearing you, that's exactly right. right. Exposed. Right. right, exposure. And that exposure will, will come at the expense of it makes them grow up. And if they oh, don't grow yeah. up, they, they they just gonna be hey you 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 out there so yeah. wow any more out there um it's good to see you wow. Renee uh, Renee has moved I had made a major move in her life she's in a new situation um I pray things are well with you Renee good to see Kay Faye and Ken out there um we have a hand up um, mentioned Bessie something Faye. I had had my uh, hand up about when you had mentioned just uh the way that this ministry is different early on you had sort of mentioned that. And I wanted to say it kind of goes with the giving conversation, too, that this ministry is a place where you can give um, of your spiritual gift. And more and more, I believe in my heart, it's going to be required of you that those of you that have been coming for a long time, you know, you'll be asked to pray on the morning meditation, asked to asked to maybe present the offertory here, uh, do the announcements, things like that, because um, of, of exactly what you just shared. You know, you, you believe that this that we are co-laboring together and the original design of ministry was to be a five-fold gifted thing so that we're all sort of presenting um, what God has given us. And so um, it really ought to be that way, actually, that those things begin to be required of you so that you can spiritually grow and mature. Mm -hmm. I mean... Like even to the place I had an allergy attack this morning and everything. And I really just didn't feel like being on camera and speaking, but this is a responsibility I have. And so learning to push past that is a maturity issue. So if you never serve in a ministry, and that's why sometimes people like serving online because they don't have to do anything, but you need to pull upon those spiritual gifts. And this is a house where, where you can do that. And, and just again, with what you had just mentioned, being behind the curtain with some people, as an actor, I know that performance is very different than an ability to live something. I mean, yes. you can go on stage. I mean, it, you know, it, it's always funny to me when people don't understand how to separate a performer from their life, you know, and, and the world's gotten really screwed up on, on those issues. But, you know, just, I mean, I've had people tell me, well, are you really crying or is it just because you're an actor? That's not fair. <laughs> Right. That's not fair, you know what I'm yeah, saying? So like, are, are you about not to fair. pay me? Because if you're not about to pay me, I'm really crying right, right. now. Unless I'm you got a angry. <laughs> so, 
Um, but just so you know, like you, there's a gifting to be able to come on stage and do something very different from who you are in actual life. So that's just something, but this isn't a platform ministry. This is a ministry where we truly come alongside each other. And, and if you're looking to utilize those gifts, this is a place where you'll be able to do that. I like that, Felicity. A couple of things. It's not a play. We're a community. We're not a platform ministry. We're not, we didn't shift to this platform because we couldn't get in the church or any of those kinds of things. We are here intentionally um, and see how the spirit set us up. We've been doing this for years um, before this. And then one thing I want to share with you guys, um, a good, a, this is how I, I was taught. Um, my teacher did it. I watch. My teacher did it with me. I did it with my teacher. Mm -hmm. Then I did it and my teacher watched. And so many of you on this call are mature enough right where you are to begin to do some things. You can start your own Tuesday night or whatever night works for you, Bible study. And I can support you. I can give you information. I can perhaps find guest speakers from within our community. Um, so there's some things you, when you're still being taught, maybe you should be teaching. Maybe mm. you should be expanding the platform. And that's what I'm here for. One of the things I want to share with Felicity, you, one of your, you're proficient in, in acting. <laughs> now, I like uh, what you shared with us a little earlier, but I want you to teach us how to take on the roles because every actor has to learn how to take on the role of the character it wants to present. So each of you need to identify what character you should be presenting and take on the role. And when a, a actor gets in role, it's difficult to tell whether or not where they begin and the character ends. And so I'm gonna have a conversation with you as we're talking about the imagination. I want, I think you can co coach many of us on how to prepare for the role we want to, 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 to take on. That's really good. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're gonna awesome. talk about that. So awesome. Anybody got anything else before we wrap up? We're right at 8.55. Yeah. Um, this, I, I yeah, want to share had this. Hand up. We oh. had a hand up by Betsy Page throughout the talk. Betsy, did you have a question or was that a mistake? No, well, I want to just share that I can um, relate to what you were saying. Can you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, good morning. Well, I can, yes, I can. Good morning to everyone. That I can relate to you, Miss V, when you were saying how you didn't let your family know when you and your daughter was at the place of you being removed it from your home. Talk present. I am still that way to this day. No, you have to change. You know why? Because I was mm -hmm. like that. Because my family say right today, they say if Brittany, my daughter's name is Brittany, if Brittany and Bessie was over there eating crackers and cheese, she wouldn't tell anyone. But then I had to learn. A lot of my friends would try to give me things and I would turn it down. They say, stop denying me of my uh, spiritual blessing of my blessing. Do, do not deny me that. So I've learned to accept more because I used to wouldn't take anything from anybody because things I experienced in my childhood. I was whooped because somebody said I, I, I asked them for some money and my mother, you know, whooped me so bad. So it took some time for me to release that. Awesome. And so for those of Bessie's been with the ministry for a very long time when we, before we were virtual and um, she's the woman I, like in, I would have never thought that she would be anyway eating crackers because in my eyesight, she was the woman with the bag. Her, her, <laughs> sister, <laughs> her, her sister were the bag ladies, meaning they always had uh, the appearance of money. But see, sometimes um, we just can't look at people for what they appear. And even though they may That's be, true. we all can have a season. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a matter of you just being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Send that person. We need to stop blessing people when it looks like they need the blessing. No, sometimes it, they don't need to look like the blessing for you to know, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to bless that person. You know, I don't always bless the person in line that looks like they're counting pennies. It may be a person that appears to be living large and I'll say, oh, I got that. And, the, and it's that they're learning a lesson. And so let's just be more sensitive to mm -hmm. what one another needs are yes very well Thanks for sharing. thank you so much bessie that definitely hit home you're right <laughs> sometimes we could be in the trenches my yes. children yes i won't even call a parent yeah seriously i will get better at that thank you for that you and felicity both thank yeah you. so bessie is also one of the, her her sister was um one of the co-pastors at the, the early church 
who who passed on. So it's really, you know, to impact people and they stay with you through transitions. You know, it could have been one thing her she was with me because her sister was the co-pastor, but you know, through the years she's been there um, for the ministry and for me. And, and I just want to say that I appreciate all of you all. Um, it's in the meantime, I get blessings not because you think I need it, it's just because hey, you appreciate the gift. And I and I pray that I'm in the situation where I'm given nuggets that are um, more um, powerful than silver and gold. Good. Renee, can you check in with us before we go? Uh, I know you uh, have had a major shift in your life. Are you still there, Renee? She is. I'm unmuting her now. All right, Renee, you should be able to talk. Let me know. Let us know if you hear us. Okay, she may not be. There you go. There she go. Oh, I think that's Mama B, actually. Mama B does have her hand up. Renee, we'll wait for you. Mama B, how are you? I'm good. I want to go along with Bessie. When I was a kid, my mother taught me my stomach would be growling from here to the west side. You say, no, thank you. No, thank you. And what I would sit there and people be eating, I'd be so hungry. But it grew up with me. Right now, people ask me, Miss B, can I do this? No, darling, I got it. Thank right. you. I got it. Even Greg would call me. Mom, do you need some? No, I'm good. I could be bringing in groceries. And I know I need help. I will leave a little in the car, go back and get a little. Miss B, do you need some help? No, thank you. No, that's the way I am. I'm 85, and that's the way I am. I'll say, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. But sometimes you cutting people's blessings off. Yes. But by not uh, accepting them, I have a janitor here. Uh, he'll say, Ma, I said, what? You need some help? I said, no, I'm good. And be so tired, I can't hardly make it through this door. But I don't mean to cut his blessings off, but that is the way I was raised. Either I said, no, thank you, or I would get whooped to death. So that's, you know, it's hard. It's very hard. And I'm still trying to come out of that and say, cool. okay, thank you. So you start by saying, you're not trying, I'm coming out of that. Trying leaves room for you not to do. So you're just going to say, I'm coming out of that. I'm shifting from that position. And we appreciate that. So that's my mother, for those of you who don't know. And like one of the things, uh, like we couldn't eat at other people's house. When I was a kid, when we go out play, uh, we, we find, if she found out we was eating over somebody's house, we was in trouble. So even to this day, I don't eat at people's house. I, sometimes I just say no. <laughs> and so let's make this, our, this week's a application. Where you would initially say no, Take a pause and ask yourself, why am I saying no when I really want to say yes? How about that? What do you guys think about that? Then we're wrapping up. You, you understand I'm that exercise? Make a commitment to that. Just giving okay. people room to give so that I can continue to be a giver. That's big right, right, right. now. Right. Renee okay. said that she's having computer issues at the moment, so I think she had to log off. Okay, good. So we just wanted to let Renee know that we're with her. She moved from Atlanta to another part of the country on the eastern seaboard. Um, blessings are going on in her life. But one of the biggest stresses in your life can be when you move. Marriage, move, children moving out. Um, all those things are stressors. So we just want to check in with her. So I'm I just, excited. Can I just say one thing about the, because uh, I, I put something to V in the chat. Um, please, please. Yeah, no, just to, uh, for Mama B and for everyone is a, a helpful transition is the phrase up until now. Up until now, I've had such a hard time asking for help up until now. I like that. Up because until that now. way you're being honest, but you're being actually extra honest because the truth is that space is being made for you to change right now. And so that way you're being the most honest instead of being prophetic into your future and also saying that you are going to continue to have a hard time with this, but you don't want to prophesy that. So up until now. I like that. Up until now, that could be a t-shirt. And then sometimes if I was going to say no, I can say to the person, up until now, I would say no, but I'm being present to my issues. And yes, you can't help me. Wow. That's yeah. powerful. Awesome. 
Well, today has been such a blessed day. I pray something has been said and uplifting and encouraging. Those of you who want to join me later on this morning, I will be the speaker at the um, uh, Center for Divine Love here in St. Louis over on Wyoming. It's a virtual ministry right now. So you can go to their, their YouTube, page, not YouTube page, their uh, Facebook page, the Center for Divine Love at 1030 Central Standard Time. I usually get up about 11 o'clock Central Standard Time to bring a, a brief message. And I'm speaking about spiritual maturity. So I'm going to go in another angle, um, add some things that you I won't that I didn't deliver. So thank you for your time. And I want to just end again with our feature song from earlier today. Um, and it's Waiting on You. God is, source is, patiently waiting on you when you supposedly think you're waiting on it. Lord, I seem to find my strength while I'm waiting on you. 